We have no band, except that we have the band recorded. So we are still going to sing with the band. How about that? Sounds and good. I thought so. And it, does, it sounds pretty good. Um, the back of the church got tough pointed last week. So that brick's all fixed back there. Also, put the, um, the bottom of this foundation out here. It was flaking away. He put a coat of that on there for us. And $1,550 oh. for all that. He was here Thursday. He had like three or four guys with him. They were here Thursday and Friday. And uh, he's, I told him one of the next things we're wanting to do is get a wheelchair ramp. And, you know, we're wanting to get these bathroom, have like at least one wheelchair accessible bathroom. Well, when I mentioned the ramp to him, he said, well, you know all the subway stores, all subway restaurants, any of them that has a wheelchair ramp? I did. He said, I, I can do that for you. Maybe $2,000. You know, now I, I have drawings. I, I didn't have these with me when I talked to him, but uh, I did describe this to him when he said $2,000 for that out of concrete. So... I said, okay, <laughs> I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> his name is Todd Salyer, I think. He, he and his girlfriend, Dee, were real excited about that cemetery. He said, I can fix some tombstones. I can stand them right up. You, you never even know, and then they won't move again. He said, I can fix them. He said, I'll, I'll come on Saturday. And he's talking about volunteering that. This is just off. He wants, wants to do this. But he said, um, I can come in on Saturday and I can straighten up 10 of them on Saturday. So when I came Friday to pay him after he did everything, he said, uh, I was telling the guys that work with me uh, about the cemetery, there's a couple of them want to come on Saturday and help me. <laughs> okay, now this, this, I'll shorten the sermon on this, all right? I want to tell you this. Because he, when he's talking about the, the cemetery, we, we came in the front door of the church here. I was showing him the stuff on the wall, maps and stuff. He said, God, when I talk about the, doing that stuff in the cemetery, he says, look, he showed me, look, hair on, on my arms is standing up. You see that? I said, I, said, I just talked about this at church a couple weeks ago. So that, that's the Holy Spirit. He goes, that's what, that's what she told me. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, it would really be good. I, I'm really... You know, getting this stuff done around the church, that's great. I really like to see him get involved in the church, serving Jesus. Because he, he, you can tell he's got a good heart. <laughs> okay, let's stand and go to the Lord in worship. Because he is not dead, but God is alive. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's not it. This is just like Tim's here, huh? <laughs>
So let's uh, let's go to the Lord for prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day you've given us that we can come into your house and worship you as you so deserve. Lord, we uh, lift up everyone that's on our prayer list. Um, those that need a physical touch, we just pray that you would uh, just touch them, Lord. Um, be with the people that are caring for them. We just pray that uh, your will would be done in their situation. We just pray also, Lord, for our first responders, um, those people on the front lines, the police, the um, fire, and uh, the doctors and nurses, Lord. We just pray protection over them and that you would be with them, give them wisdom in, in doing their jobs. And uh, we thank you for their service. We thank you for our service members that are serving today, Lord. We just pray that you would watch over them as well. We pray uh, for those that aren't with us for whatever reason, travel or um, staying home. Um, we just pray that you would just meet them where they're at, that you would let them know that um, that you're there, that you're part of their life, and that, um, that you're um, always available for them. We pray you would be with our service today. We just pray that you would speak through Brent to uh, bring your message to us. We pray that everything that is said would be... Um, according to your will, that it would be impressed on our hearts and minds, that we would take it out um, to families and friends, community around us, and that we would apply um, uh, our Christ-likeness um, to our everyday activities, that other people would come to know you as their Lord and Savior because they've been around us. And we thank you for all things that you bless us with every day. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want, I want to give a short message, but I want it to be powerful and something that we can take with us, because this is good stuff. Now, for one thing, just so we're clear, I want to talk about faith and works. Faith and works. For one thing, very first thing, you cannot work your way into heaven. Not, not at all. Not going to do it. You, you can't be good enough. Everybody has fallen short of the glory of God. Um, that, and that's one of the first Bible verses I learned was that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So, you've fallen short, you ain't going to work your way in. You have to have, well, it has to be grace. So, Ephesians 2, starting verse 8, For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is God's gift. Not from works, so that no one can boast, for we are His creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. Now, that's the backbone of our belief. I believe that with the core of me. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, and that's it. You cannot do anything. I cannot do anything to make me deserve heaven. I can't. I can't. I, I know one thing. Jesus did something that I can now deserve heaven. And it's because of Jesus, not me. So, we're going to go right to the book of James, because this is our main passage. James 2, 14 to 19. And I think that's in, that is your word line for today. Now, if you look, I have verses 14 and then 18 and 19 are the main ones I want to see today. So, it starts out. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can his, can his faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothes and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you don't give them what the body needs, what good is it? In the same way, if it doesn't have works, Faith, I'm sorry, faith, if it doesn't have works, is dead by itself. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I will show you faith from my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. The demons also believe and they shudder. First question James asks, what good is it if someone says he has faith, does not have works? If, a man, if that man says he has faith, do you believe him? Is there any evidence of it? There's no evidence of it in his living. Does he really have faith? Now, when you look at that right there, that phrase right here, 
Now, if you look in the King James, it says, Can faith save him? That's the way the King James has that passage. Can faith save him? In the Greek, there's a demonstrative pronoun before that. Meaning, if, if this guy, he says he has faith but has no works, can that faith save him? That's specifically what it says in the Greek. Can that faith that has no works, can that faith save him? Now, in the, in the home Christian standard, you can see it, it talks about his faith. Can, can his faith save him? Meaning, that faith we're talking about, that, that's what... That's an accurate way of what that passage says. Can that faith save him? So, can faith save you? If I say, yeah. I'm going to, I'll edit the video on YouTube so you guys shout, all right? <laughs> what was the question? Can his faith save him? Yes. Right. But when faith doesn't have works, can that faith save you? No. This? Now, We'll go on and we'll see about that. I like what um, Pastor says about this. This, it, it, this drives home the point that professed faith being totally lacking in results is useless. This wordy faith is not worth calling faith at all. You hear that? Faith that doesn't have any effect on you is worthless. It doesn't do anything for you. If your faith doesn't, doesn't have any effect on you, it's useless. It's worthless. It's not doing you any good. Well, some of you are looking at me like I'm sketchy. <laughs> that have anything good to sermon, does it? <laughs> now, uh, let's go on. I, I want to I get into this some more so you can see what I'm saying. Because we're going to get right down here. Because this is one of my favorite verses. And this is Father's Day, so I thought, come on, we'll do this. We talk about this. And Brother Paul shared this passage in the past week, one of his text messages. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works. I'll show you my faith by my works. You want to see my faith? Look at the works. Jesus Use that. Now, this, this is him. This is not my notes. Jesus used that as an evidence of who he was. I'm the son of God. If you don't believe what I say, believe by the works I do. Jesus said that. He had that as his own proof. Now, he says here, show me your faith without works, and I will show you faith from my works. James says, you believe there is one God, good for you. Calvin says this, John Calvin says this about this passage. Knowledge of God can no more connect a man with God than the sight of the sun can carry him to the heavens. Faith and not knowledge is what makes our connection with God. And since we are sinners, our faith must go through a mediator, Jesus Christ. So, I believe in God. Everybody that believes in God, shout amen. 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 I didn't have to edit that. That was good. <laughs> That's right. You know why? Because there is God. Amen? He yeah. is. The one who was and who is and who is coming. That's what I'm talking about. He is and he is coming. So, the demons know that. Now, what, what, watch this. Because the demons, in one of the passages that we look at, you believe God's one? <laughs> good for you. You're right up there with the demons. The demons. They, now these passages, I don't know if these are in your in the notes or not, if you want to look these up. But these are all different encounters that demons had with Jesus and their response to Jesus. Just to show you real quick. Matthew 8, 29, they shouted, What have you to do with us? Son of God, have you come here to torment us before the time? They were terrified. Scared them to death. What do you have to do with us? Mark 1, 29. What do you have to do with us, Jesus, Nazarene? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. The demons, they knew who they were dealing with, and they were scared. In our song that we sang, they tremble at his, at his, at his voice. Uh, Mark 5, 7, he cried out with a loud voice, What do you have to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you not to torment me. These guys were terrified. 
The Greek word in that, is when it says that they shudder, you know, right there, that's, the Greek word is choreo, where we get horror, horror, like a horror movie. That's the same word. These, these guys are terrified of, of God. They're terrified of Jesus. Scared to death. Um, I was trying to think of an illustration for uh, Shudder. Now, I talked about having the Holy Spirit, and that, that feels good, kind of a chills. Mm -hmm. Shudder is kind of like a bad kind of chills. Mm -hmm. Now, since we talked about our dads a little bit, I'll, I'll share a little bit about my dad. One time we were at a church thing. I was probably around 12 or so, around that age. We were at a church thing, and it was like an after church thing where we were eating and stuff. And I happened to be sitting next to Dad. And while, like I said, I was 12 maybe, while we were sitting there, but I burped. Like a 12 year old might do, you know what I mean? As soon as I did it, I was thinking where I was, and that was not the right thing to do. You know, I instantly thought of that. And while I'm thinking of that, I... you do that again, I'll we'll knock your teeth down your throat. <laughs> and it was about, he was about that close to my ear, and he said it just that. You do that again, I'll we'll knock your teeth down your throat. <laughs> I shut it. I did. Because I knew that he was serious. Now look, that's what these demons are. They shut it. With, when they're around Jesus, they're shuddering. They, what are you, you come to torment us? They, they were scared to death. So, what I want, here's what I want to point out with this. Um, it's not the fact that they're terrified. Because look, if you have faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be, you don't have to shudder in fear. Those who have true faith don't have to shudder with fear. Because it tells us in Hebrews 4, 16, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness. We can go in there with boldness. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to shudder. But the, the, it's not that they're scared or that they shudder. The fact is that they do something because they believe. It causes them to do something. Do you see what I mean? They believe and they can't control themselves because they're so. They believe that much. Now, James is saying here, don't you believe that much? That Not that you're terrified, but that your faith is strong enough that it affects you. My faith affects me physically. It affects me spiritually. It affects me emotionally. It affects me every way that I can be affected. It affects me. And it's like that with everybody. You can't take your, your soul that's inside you and put it in a cabinet while you go do something else. Everything is connected. My faith is, is in everything. And it affects how, what I do. You want to see my faith? Watch my works. Because my faith makes me do stuff. The good stuff, right? Amen? So, does your faith make a difference? That's the question I want to ask you today. Does your faith make a difference? God doesn't want us to shudder in fear. But he does expect us to show evidence of our faith by our acts of charity and love for others that gives glory to him. So the main point I want to make is you can't work your way into heaven by good works, but rather do good works to show others that you really know you're going to heaven. Look, if you know that's where you're going and that's your goal and we're on a mission for that, it affects what we're doing on the mission or on the way. That's what you believe. If you believe that that's where I'm going, I want to stand before Jesus, and I want, I want to hear him say, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. He's going to give me a crown. 
of righteousness. It's reserved for those that wait and are waiting for his coming. I can't wait to get it and put it at his feet. God, He loves me that much. My faith makes a difference in what I do. Amen? Amen. That's the message today. Look, if, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you don't know what I'm talking about, I pray that you'll, you'll say those words and you'll, you'll recognize when His Spirit speaks to your heart that he, God wants a relationship with you. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Say, Lord, I forgive I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I trust what you did on the cross for me. Because I can't save myself. And only you can save me. I want you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. If anybody pray that prayer today, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you are, I just pray that you will recognize God's Spirit speaking to you and you're one of His children. We, being God's children, our Heavenly Father, He's given us faith. Our faith make a difference in us. Amen? Amen? So that it's visible to others. You want to see my faith? Just watch me. Watch. I'll show you faith. Watch me. Let's go ahead and pray. Father in heaven, you are awesome and you are amazing and you are worthy of our worship. Lord, we thank you that you give us faith. You have instilled that within us. It's not something that we can make up or imagine but it's something that you give. That grace that you give and the faith that draws us to you, I pray, Father, that today each one of us, our faith will be, will motivate us towards your kingdom, towards your glory. I pray, Lord, that others will see our good works and give you glory. Lord, I, and as I already mentioned, with those that have accepted you into their heart today, as your spirit moves in, I pray, Lord, that they will also use their faith to help others and give glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
told him this this sermon today. Uh, it was, I was thinking about Jack and Janine. Um, they were at our very the very first time we had church, the first first meeting at Hope Fellowship over on Little Big Peak. They were here, and I thought that's not. I knew because I worked with John for 25 years. I thought that's real nice that John's parents came. And for our first church service, I really didn't know they would be here until everyone since then. And listen, this sermon, if you want to see their faith, if you want to see the faith of Jack and Janine, they, they showed it the whole time they were here. They didn't just show up, they, but they, they contributed, they gave, they were, they were faithful to serve at Stowe, serving others, and always... You know, Janine would just bring stuff in for somebody. Anyway, I was telling Jack, I said, Jack, uh, we've got the church paid off. And I said, I don't think you guys were a big deal about that. They were with us from the beginning. And I said, I'd like to get a plaque or something for you and Janine at the church. And it's because they showed their faith the whole time. He said, well, I think you probably did a lot. <laughs> but but I, I said, Jack, you guys, I said, really, they have encouraged me, you know, throughout time. There's, you guys think being preachers is all, you know, gumdrop some candy canes, but it's not. It's not. It's not, Cheryl, really, it's not. <laughs> all right, I just want to share that with you. Hey, check on each other and, and check on others that aren't here and stuff. And, that's it. Well, have a good week. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.